I Love Stocks with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is July 16th, 2019, and I want to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Please subscribe and ring that bell for future updates on our YouTube channel, Miss Vegas. Okay, so welcome everyone, and hopefully, hopefully had a great day. And I uh, just want to talk to you guys about some interesting picks. So we're going to talk about PBYI, APRN, BPTH, Facebook, CLDR, and I might even have a little bonus just to give you a little heads up on something to watch for tomorrow as well. So let's get started. Let's talk about PBYI. Fresh off the news, thank you to my team at Trade Exchange. Um, PBYI is Puma Biotechnology. The licensing partner, Knight Therapeutics, did receive regulatory approval from Health Canada to commercialize Neuralink uh, for extended adjuvant treatment of the hormone receptor. And this is for HER2 positive early stage breast cancer. So the fact that they got approval from Health Canada to commercialize the product is actually, to me, uh, good news. And uh, Jim's going to talk about the chart. Uh, currently, the stock's trading right now. The spread is a little bit wide. Um, I wouldn't be jumping into this just yet. Took a starter here at 11.15 um, as a swing trade into tomorrow. And currently trading around 11.50. Um, but, Jim, let's hear about the chart because you were saying that it's uh, quite, at, quite at the bottom there. Yeah, we're getting ready. Yeah, it definitely closed at a bottom at 10.77. Actually, 10.79 and... Miss Vegas, you just ran right into the first support of 11.54 right now. We're at 11.50. But that's my, I mean, first resistance. And then the second resistance after that's going to be this 10.81. I'm pulling this up on a 20-day on a, um, chart. Looking at a yearly, you can see that the thing's way oversold. It had a $54 high up here with the double top and then failed. And you can see it tried to fill a gap a couple of times. Then this last gap, it just kind of fell down, down here to a bottom of 1077. So I think you're in good trade right here right now, Miss Vegas. I'm going to look for a couple of resistances that we can run to on this. I see one here at 1223. Then I see another one right here around 1281. And another one right up in here. I'm going to put that one right there right around. I haven't charted this up until just now because it just popped up on the scanner. 1320. So we're going to pull this now to the 20 day. I say pull back support. If it pulls back any at all here, around 1125, I can see that happening. And we do have the day low down there at 1077. And your second support is going to be right here, probably around 1107. And your third support is going to be right here at 1093 with a low down here at 1077, strong buy. Right now, we're going to pull up the one minute one daily one minute you can see it pulled back just a little bit right now to 1040 so we've got support levels is going to be no lower than the 1092 that's going to be a low third support second here at 1107 your first support right here at 1125 which I probably we probably will see then you got another one right here at 1137 which we're on top of right now we got a break resistance up around the 1154 to 1181 and I'm going to pull up that 20 day one more time and I can call the rest of these resistances out if we can break past that 1181 I see a pretty good little spot right here right around the 1214 and then maybe if it keeps running up 1233 and that 1281 so this is a nice little catch after hours off that news Miss Vega got it through her partners there and that's about what I can tell you right now pull back support like I said, no lower than 1092 with a resistance breakout of 1181. That's PY, PBYI. The next yeah, thing. it sounds like peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> so PBYI. Okay, so that's great. Thanks for that information. Yes, And if you follow us on uh, Stock Twits or Twitter, sometimes during the day when I talk about charts or we're in a trade, I will put resistance and supports. So if you follow us on social media, um, you can at least have the information if you're not in our room. Um, I try to give some information live on the on the feed. So that's good to know. 
Um, the other thing too, so let, next one we're going to talk about is let's talk about apron. So blue apron. I mean, you guys know, I mean, this poor, this poor stocks had a hard time. I mean, you know, we're talking, you know, back in April, like I want to go back a little bit, you know, they did bring on, um, Linda Finley, uh, Kozlowski as the president and CEO, they brought her on board back in April. And then back in February, if I go a little bit back, you know, they had, um, they had a, a block of 15 million shares offered at 115 to 120. But you know what, here's what's happening here. So the company did reaffirm guidance uh, in April um, of significant improvement. And um, the other thing too, is they did, um, you know, unfortunately they did miss uh, on revenue, but the earnings did get beat by four cents. But then here's what happened. You know, May 20th, they had a reverse stock split. They did announce that it would be one for 15. And uh, we know that sometimes when there is a reverse stock split, that it also makes the float lower. And obviously there's less shares. So you know what? This became a low floater around what, Jim? We said about 6 million? Yeah, around 6, 3, so 6, we, 5 million, yeah. Exactly. So we've been watching Apron because we're like, okay, so now that they've done this, could there be future news coming up on the stock? Now it took some time because we're talking, this took effect June 13 and now we're July 16. And today we had news that Beyond Meats, BYND and Apron introduced a Beyond Meat on their menus. This is actually going to start August. So I'm sure there'll be another PR in August that this is official and we're starting to deliver all the, you know, the, the products with availability for Beyond Meat product. And so I did say this morning pre-market, I did share that news with the room. Whoever gets up early got the news and they were trading beyond, they were trading Blue Apron first thing this morning. And people were banking on this and we talked about float rotation and we had a beautiful run. But I'm gonna let Jim talk about that because he was all over this all day, calling the pullbacks, calling the supports, calling the breakouts calling the highs, calling the resistance, call it's like he was just all over it. Like this was like his little baby the whole day. So Jim, over to you. Oh yes, Miss Apron mentioned it first thing out of the gate this morning at around 7, 18 a.m. And this thing definitely, we called it out about 8, 24 this morning. It ran to a high of 13, 65. This is definitely in the service sector with a volume Share rotation volume was around 29.3 million. So that's probably what, five times share rotation? Yeah, pretty close to five, four and a half. And that's about what I can say about this. It ran 66% off that call. And this was our play of the day. So I'm going to pull up the chart. Give me just one second here. Should have that typed in already. I played it off with a TTM squeeze chart today. It was called very early this morning. So once I got in the room, the bell rang, I got in this trade and I bounced her on up and we ran her all the way up to about, the, like I said, we started calling the resistance right around the $13 level. You know, me and Vegas went back and forth about resistance and we said this thing was gonna go to 10 bucks, she said it. And so I was scalping it on the way up. Every pullback I could get, I would get in it. But she held on to it pretty strong. She ran it up to $10 like she said it was going to go. Once it did that, it did break past that. So I was calling out the resi next resistances all the way up. Once it started seeing that pattern on that TTM squeeze in red, it started pulling back and I scalped it a few times on the way down. It definitely respected the 9 EMA most of the day, as you can see here, the first part of the day, and bouncing off that 34 uh, every couple of times. And once that 9 crossed down below that 34, that was a time for me to yell out to the room that this thing was definitely starting to be bearish. And I also pay attention to social media because, you know, the, the shorters will come out and start playing their genre about, you know where this is going to go or, or you know they're going to start putting fear in the market definitely once it starts selling off people are going to get out and the volume definitely dropped after that so right after hours we're going to look at this after hours right now she did pull back 
to a low. I had a little knife here around 985 and then she bounced on up a little bit. You see the 9 is definitely disrespected that 34. It also made a major disrespect when it crossed that 200 EMA. These are the three different moving averages that I'm using right now. That is the 200, the 34 in the white, and the blue one is the 9. Once I see the disrespect, it goes under that 9, that's the time I start to sell, start putting out a caution, but cautious, caution button. So that's apron, where do I think it's going to go. I think it can pull back probably to around 937, maybe back down to this support area of nine bucks tomorrow. That's going to be my second to low support. You see where we had that high right here pre-market where it ran up to about nine dollars and pulled back to that 34. My second resistance support level is going to be right here right around the 967 maybe. And then that I'll just draw these in here and then I'll kind of chat them out to you. And we've got a resistance to break here at, 9, 6, at 1064. So I think this will definitely pull back now and the bears will take control a little bit of it tomorrow because the news will kind of filter out until we get the next PR on it. But now we know that it did have the great breakout that we've been looking for for a long time. I believe the IPO was around $11 about three years ago. I called this thing to go down and it did. Now we're, we've got a lower float so it brings in more interest and this is going to be a stock that you're going to want to watch tomorrow so we've got a low support right around the nine dollars i don't want to see it go no lower than that nine then i want to see it break a resistance of 1064 and then we got another support now after hours i'm going to put here at 987 so that's going to be my very first one and that's apron and that was the play of the day and congratulations to the room and the room that followed us now the next one we're going to talk about is going to be BPTH. Yeah, so you know what? On BPTH, I mean, that one there um, this morning again, uh, I will show this uh, to you, Jim. Uh, again, this is another pre market. And you know what? I got to tell you, I'm really not a pre market trader, but uh, the team has, has asked and said, oh, can we, you know, can we look at pre market trades? So I said, okay, let me, let me try doing some pre market. Um, and, you know, there's nothing wrong to admit, like, listen, that's not my forte. Um, some people only trade pre-market, and that's the only thing they're good at. And I know one gentleman that I used to know that only traded pre-market, and that was where he made the most money. Um, not everyone can trade pre-market, and not a lot of people want to. Some people think pre-market's like the biggest, you know, sham to, like, you know, news comes, and it's an opportunity to grab and then dump on people. But it really does depend on what is the news and how you're going to trade it. So anyhow, going back to BPTH, uh, Jim here, I'll show you the screenshot here. So you can show that to everyone. On uh, BPTH, I did call this in the morning. And uh, what I did call actually in particular was that um, the stock had been upgraded, I believe to $28. So I, I did share the idea this morning at uh, 7.31 a.m. Jim, do you not hear me? Yeah, I hear you, but I don't see it. Okay. Okay, well, you have to go into the, probably the main I got chat. It now. For, I, got it. I got it now. It should be there. Okay. Just so when you say hello, I don't know if you can hear me. So um, on this particular chart, when I did look at it, um, I did see that there was not really a lot of resistance. So I did chart it up to 16.15. We saw that it ran beyond that. And then I had my next resistance around 1891. Now, obviously, would you see the move happen today uh, to get to that number? Uh, obviously not all in one day. I mean, the target's been raised to $28. So there is room for the stock to move. Um, so, Jim, let's hear about that BPTH chart action. Yeah, here's another low float stock that we ran up before, once before. Let me see if I, there it is. Definitely hit the 1738 high right here with, I mean, the 1753 with a resistance of 1738. She's kind of pulled back just a little bit to support level at 1641. And this is what you would call almost, you would call this an ascending pattern right here for a breakout. You see you had the highs and the highs and the lower highs, and it followed that 200 up most of the day. So I'm going to pull up maybe a one-year chart on this. 
where you had that big run all the way up to 70. I remember this day. This was a very exciting day when it ran all the way to 73.50. It got a little carried away, and then she kind of pulled back in a descending pattern. We've had a triple bottom down here for the last couple of months. It's been one we've always had on our watch list, but now we've broke out of resistance on this trade. So we're going to pull up the 20-day right now. And I'm going to draw another little resistance support level right here. So look at this beautiful breakout today from $13 all the way up to $17.53. So that's that's really that's a five dollar that's a five dollar bounce right there. Pretty good little engulfing candles on an hour chart. So we're going to bring it back up to the day, and I'm going to see support. I'm going to draw this support line right here while I'm here. We did have a little run on it a couple weeks. It ran all the way to 1650 and then pulled back to a low right here at 1265. To me, that's quadruple bottom. You hit bounce, bang, bang, and then bang today. And she had a big run after that third little triple bottom right there. And I always pay attention to them on a 20-day chart. You see a triple bottom, they're usually a lot of times if it's a momentum stock, it'll run up. And definitely being a low float, that gives a little bit of extra lead way. So I just drew in another little support line right there at 1463. I'm going to divide this, bring this. So we're going to have a strong, strong support right here at 1532. I'm going to turn that into a red line so I can remember that come tomorrow or even after hours. That's going to be probably my, my right now, that's going to be my support level. It's going to be that 1532. Then I'm going to have to see if I can find me a little more one more resistance on this and I'll bring it back up to that so I'm going to have another resistance level right here right around 2077 that's where I think I'm going to put that resistance level so we'll bring this back to a th one day we got a low support down here at 1532 I don't want to see it go no lower than that then we've got a solid second support, real solid at 1564, with that first support right here at the 1643 level. And I'm seeing, you know, this definitely a nice little ascending triangle breakout right here, as you can tell. So it, is, it, it pretty much will probably pull back to this 1562. We need to break the 11 resistance of 1723. I'm going to pull up the 20 day, see if I can find the other one. Nope, I've got to go back here to the three month. So once we break that 1738, the next resistance level is going to be up here around 1816. And then we're going to have another one right here at around 1848 with a high resistance break on a three month chart of 1896. Now you're willing to stop these charts at any time, this video at any time, and copy this chart down and use them for personal reference. Please don't go off my picks, but definitely use them as a tool to help yours out. And that's going to be BPTH, and it was a great call today in the room. Support level again, no lower than 1532, with a resistance of around 1896 to 20 to $19, if it wants to continue on up. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be one that everybody knows in the world, it probably has more users than any other app out there, and that's going to be Facebook. Well, Facebook, Facebook. I mean, I don't even have, I actually don't have personal Facebook at all. Um, so, uh, you know, it's just a, too much time, and I just find, you know, what the, so, the personal ones, like I think they're good for businesses to advertise and have groups and networking. I just find for personal stuff, um, you know, depending who you're, what you're sharing, but it's almost like, you know, photo albums. And I guess it's a good way to find people from the past, but I've actually heard some really good stories that that would be for another episode. Um, but anyways, let's talk about Facebook. So you guys know, I've been talking about Facebook. I'm bullish on Facebook. And, um, you know, especially the fact now that they're trying to, to do um, a Libra, and, uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, they got blasted uh, by Trump the other day. He demands that they face banking regulations. And Fed Chair Powell was out again on the Libra saying that it has concerns. It raises concerns for the privacy and financial stability. And obviously, um, Libra will not be offered until regulatory concerns and approvals are actually fully addressed. And there is actually a lot of work to convince the Treasury 
Um, they've had multiple meetings with Facebook to express the concerns about Libra. And uh, also today, we saw that uh, Facebook did begin hearings on in front of the Senate Banking Committee, um, which because they're looking to prepare to defend the eventual launch of their digital coin Libra. Now, I have mentioned before, if you've been listening to our YouTubes, um, you know, we I did talk about why I'm long on Facebook, why I'm bullish on Facebook. But I did talk about, you know, this Libra coin and all the investors involved in it. And just a you know, quick, you know, reminder, I mean, there's PayPal's invested, MasterCard's invested, uh, Square's invested. I mean, so many different um, financial fintech products out there are actually invested in Libra. So it's not just Facebook doing their own little thing. They have actually other fintech products that are in the financial sector invested in Libra coin. So like, why would they do that if it's obviously um, not a good thing? So anyhow, we'll see what the uh, Senate Banking Committee has to say. They are obviously started the sessions today. They will continue all day tomorrow. And then maybe we'll hear something. Now, here's why I want to talk about Facebook, because I don't need to repeat this whole thing. But I want to give you guys a refresher. But earlier today, on Facebook, in particular, in the option land, uh, we saw a huge order one on one print. Uh, one person bought 30,000 contracts, and I believe they paid 33 cents. And um, that's a lot of contracts, 30,000 at 33 cents. And they, a weekly contract, which does expire on Friday this week, and they bought the 210 strike. So I've never really seen such a big order going in on one on just one um, one large order like that. I've actually never seen volume this big on the Facebook weekly calls. Um, I've seen it, you know, 10,000, you know, 12,000, 8,000, but I've never seen something like this. Now we see over 32,500 in the volume specifically today. Um, so something could be brewing here. So could it be because they're waiting to see the results of this Libra committee meeting? I don't know. So again, keep this on watch. Um, did pick up the contracts at 37 cents. Um, they were high of day earlier at 89, but I didn't. we didn't buy them there. We bought them on the pullback when Facebook re and went down. So we picked up the contracts based on the volatility, but specifically what was appealing was Rich alerted this unusual um, large block trade and that was very unique so we were intrigued and we took that trade so thanks to rich um, he's been on fire uh, with all his calls and i'm um, hoping to see some fire with this one so uh we'll see what happens i'll give you guys an update uh towards the end of the week so jim anything you want to comment on the facebook chart yeah definitely definitely okay. let me pull this up to a 20 day I see a couple little pullback supports on this. Maybe I see probably no lower than two hundred dollars on this one here. We did pull back there about three days ago, last Friday. She did pull back, kind of bounced up, and then retraced a high during that whole day and hit a resistance high of two hundred four, two hundred five forty seven. So that's going to be my resistance to break out. Right now we're setting kind of almost like a, uh, I would say, an ascending triangle in the past three days where this has got to bounce back up and break that resistance of 205.47. So I've got a low support, no lower than 200 on it. We're going to pull this up to daily now or maybe a five day. Your next support levels is going to be this one right here at 203.40. And then if it decides to drop any lower than that we're going to have a 20263 but the resistance we got to break is going to be that 20547 I'm not in the trade yet I might get in it tomorrow if it does pull back I can get in it at a cheaper price maybe but the resistance we're going to have to break is going to be that 20547 I think we'll see it we have a descending pattern into close here it did close at 20384 and right now we're at 20364 so let me sit, repeat this one more time. No lower than 200. Then we've got the second support channel right here at 202.36 to 202.63 with your first support right here at 203.40.
we're sitting right on a pivot point now on, a, on this chart right at 203.79 with the resistance levels of one's going to be right here at 204.35, 204.82 with a long resistance of 205.47. Also, I just want to mention that earnings will be coming out on the 24th of next week. So that's going to be a catalyst for me to maybe even play it into next week. I'll be watching that next Friday call too. So this is going to be Facebook. It always does pretty well on earnings. And it mostly does pretty well on earnings, Facebook does. Because it's just unbelievable the revenue they take in. But Miss Vegas pointed this out to the room. And I want to thank you, Rich, for pointing out that volume today at that 210 strike. And that's Facebook. And the, we got one more we're going to talk about, and it's going to be, unless Vegas brings in a bonus play, will be CLDR. Okay, so CLDR, Jim, I sent you a screen capture there, too. Okay. So, you know, CLDR, um, you know, this particular one, I just wanted to mention, uh, again, this company is Cloudera. You know, they do platforms um, and IT platforms. They also have a partnership, obviously, with IBM. Um, you know, it's been mentioned that there could be a, a they, they were positive, you know, positive mention on an M&A blog. I mean, this is actually like a good company. Um, but the reason I bring it up is just to keep it on your watch list. I mean, we have a swing trade going on, uh, but there was a block trade today of 974,000 shares at 527.50. So again, whenever I see like large block buys um, and follow through from the print, um, that is a sign, maybe money flowing in, interest in the stock, and a potential move for, you know, who knows what could happen, but for obviously looking for continuation. That is a lot of money going into the stock. Um, that's, you know, millions of dollars just on this one stock. And the fact that I like it, that it's so, you know, such an, you know, an under $10 stock, that that kind of money is going through here. So definitely keep it on your watch. We do have a swing trade in play. Um, that we actually took at five dollars and thirty cents, um, and so Jim, let's hear about the uh, Cloudera uh, chart. Yeah, I haven't charted this up at all, so you're all going to get you a little fancy lesson right now. We definitely have a huge gap to fill, as I just noticed. We also have a double bottom we're looking at here, right around the four eighty nine area, five bucks. Let's call it even at five. We got a resistance to break. That's going to be right in here. Well, I'll just draw it in there. I'm going to call it right there, right around a little under six bucks. You got to have real good eyes, I'll tell you that, the way I do this up. So we got 597 resistance to break. We're going to have a little, let me pull this up to a 20 day. And we're going to have a long resistance we got to get to on this one at 877. You see that huge gap we got to fill there from 597 to 877. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart now, and I'm going to look for some more little spots to get in this thing to call support and resistance. we got a 517 support right here. we got another one right here. Right there at 528. Resistance to break. And we did that at 534. We bring her up a little bit higher to right around 540, 545 with a long resistance right here at 567. Then we've got a 20 day high of 644 off the top of that wick. Usually when you see a wick that big you're gonna have a sell-off and that's exactly what happened. This big engulfing candle pulled back on an hour. This is an hour hourly chart on a, on a day and that's where that side settle out right there. So that to me is a, a candle that says the next we're going to have a couple of weeks of sell-off and that's exactly what happened. She did find a bottom here at 503 so I'm going to adjust this one right here. I'm going to remove that and I'm going to add it and I'm going to put a 505 support right there. So that's going to be your low support. That's going to be the strong buy area. Again Vegas mentioned about the big block trade that came in. Your second support is at 517 and that first one's right here right around the 528 area and we're about there right now right after hours we're at 539 so the next resistance we got to break is going to be that 545 and then bring it up to 567 with a resistance breakout of 597 
to a 20 day high of 644. You can see this is a beautiful week chart. You can tell by that bottom of 503 how it's run up today with a daily with today's high of right around and we'll pull up the minute to figure that one out of 541. Now I'm going to see if there's anything in here I see else. Now to me at 522. So I might adjust this just a little bit. We've got the first support at 534. 528, third one there's 522, and anything below that's going to be a strong buy, and I mean strong buy. And I'll pull that 20-day chart back up here so you can see that. And that strong buy is going to be right around between the 505 and the 517 area. Resistance to break is going to be that, 560, that 545, it's going to be your first resistance. Second is going to be that 567. With a hard resistance at 597, bring it on all the way up to 644. And at CLDR, I wish you the best. Remember, I always play these trades off the 200 EMA, the 9, and the 34. And if you pull it up on the daily, one minute, we did have a crossover here first thing in the morning. We kind of stayed above that 200, and that 9 creeped up above that 34 and snuggled against that 34 bouncing back off that 200 would have been great scout plays and it did kind of have a little sideways channel on it and it did get oversold once it got oversold you saw that nine crossover both of them both that 34 and that 200 that was a strong buy so you could have probably took this up not very much but you know at least that's how you read these patterns and right now it's respecting that nine and that 34 and that CLDR and anything else Miss Vegas to please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell and I also want to mention one more thing and let Miss Vegas have the final say here we do have a website you can always hit that Twitter link follow us on Twitter we also have a link that you can follow us on stock twits and we're, we, we post alerts in all three of them rooms or in them two rooms and Miss Vegas has her own little channel right here hit that follow button you can get it off the link on the website and you can also hit mine and that'll bring you straight to stock twits too in fact she's the boss she has twice as much followers as I do but I do appreciate her help she has got me going on this Twitter page and I'm up to 2100 now so Miss Vegas that's great yep. that's great well you know what it's teamwork so I just want to mention one last one just for you guys to watch tomorrow. Uh, the ticker H-A-I-R, which is Restoration Robotics. They are a leader in, obviously, hair transplanting with their technology called Artaz IX. Um, they're going to be tomorrow morning on the Today Show on NBC. Um, and I believe it starts at, like, the show starts at, like, 7 o'clock. And apparently they're going to be on TV. So the gentleman's going to be on TV will be Dr. Michael Wolfelt, and he's going to actually perform. So he's not just going to talk about the product. He's going to perform a live demo of a hair transplant using their technology, the Artis IX. So definitely, um, you guys should be watching this. If you're up early in the morning, check it out. Because, you know, I love hearing about a stock and a company, but I, I would actually love to see this medical device um, in use. Um, and uh, I mean, I have so much <laughs> hair that I would never need a transplant, but, uh, thank God at this time, but, um, it is definitely, I think, uh, people love the product. Um, you know, it changes lives. I think, you know, people feel more confident. Um, you know, unfortunately some people have loss of hair for different reasons and, uh, knowing that they can, uh, have a product like restoration robotics. Um, be used by companies that would provide that kind of service um, is great. So this is a product that robotically implants the hair follicle into the actual location in your own scalp. And um, it's just a fantastic. So I actually look forward to seeing it because I have said before, robotics, medical technology and robotics are the theme for 2019. One of, and uh, aside from the fintech world, but uh, definitely robotics are in. So watch that tomorrow on the Today Show. And then we'll see what happens on the stock. So hair should be on your watch list tomorrow for sure. I think we'll see some action. And that's it for me, Jim. Anything else? Yeah, I'll just give a short review here. 
I got a support right. level support level right around on here, right around the 66, 65. I like to see it respect that nine. If not, it'll pull back to that 34 on a daily one minute. We're going to pull up that chart right now. We've got a low support right here, right around 63 cents. Then 67. First support right around 70. Resistance to break is going to be that 77 cents. And I'm going to pull this 20 day up. And it's a beautiful week chart running up here. You can see six days in a row where it's been totally green. I think we can go ahead and break that resistance of 77 cents tomorrow. And we're going to pull up the yearly. I'm going to magnify this up real fast. We've got a couple more resistances. I'd like to see it hit that 83 and go up to 97. If not, it'll pull back to the support level of right around that 67 cents that I mentioned earlier. That'll be your second support. So that's going to be hair. I wish I had more myself. They used to say that my hair looked like Elvis. And Miss Vegas, you better knock on wood. Because you might lose some hair later in life. <laughs> I don't know. And my, my uh, family, no one seems to have any hair loss issues. But hey, listen, it does happen to women. So it's not just an issue for men. So That's what? Right. You never know. You never know. Oh, of cancer patients probably. And who knows what how, how this could help. Yeah, I mean, different, you know, different people. Different, like I said, different reasons uh, for hair loss. Okay, well, that wraps up the uh, market report. For Tuesday, July 16th. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And we'll do another one tomorrow. And uh, we love stocks. We love the viewers. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, following, um, joining the channel, joining the room. Visit the room for the free trial. Um, I love hearing from even, you know, I met one gentleman today. He, he actually told me that he connected with us through social media and then through YouTube. And uh, he came into the room. And uh, I didn't even know he was, you know, I knew he had, was visiting, but I didn't know, if, you know, I don't, I never know if someone just visits the room and are they actually trading? And uh, he actually shared with me today and I'll actually show you guys tomorrow. Um, I just didn't have a chance to take the information down, but he did basically say um, that he's been in the room on a trial and he just joined actually last Tuesday. Today's his last day of the trial and he's actually really excited to join. He works full time. And uh, he said that he's really enjoying the swing trades. Um, he sometimes is able to day trade, not a lot, but when he can, he's very pleased. And I think he said his portfolio, Jim, what did I tell you? He said, he, and he showed me his, his account, like he's using Robinhood. Um, and what he did say to me was that, uh, I just want to let you know, I've been joining your trial and my trial runs out, but I just want to let you know that I am signing up and, um, his portfolio has been up, and this is just in a week. In one week, it's gone up for him specifically uh, 191%. And actually, you know what, Jim? I am actually going to show you this, and I'm just going to have you please share this yes, uh, with the viewers just because I think this is – I was like, what? This is great that this is your experience here in a week. And like I said, I knew he was in the channel, but – I just never know if someone's actually in a trade, not in a trade, and unless they share it with us. Some people don't want to. They're shy. They have a small account. So, you know what? I totally get it, you know? So, I was just, like, so happy to hear that he had a phenomenal result. And, again, I mean, he's just on a trial, and he feels it's worth his while, and he's going to be joining. So, here's the gentleman. Jim, you could show the Robin Hood. And he said, from one week ago to now, you can see he is up 191%. I was like, oh, my God, that's just, like, amazing. So uh, I look forward to actually chatting with him further. Um, I did uh, mention that I'd like to talk to you a little more just to hear about his trading background. And, um, you know, I do take the time to reach out to everybody. And you know what? Jim does the same thing. Uh, we like to reach out to everybody that comes and joins us because we really do care to help everybody. So thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Congratulations to all the traders. Let's trade green and look forward to talking to you guys tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. And we also, here's the website. So if you ever want to join our chat service, just hit click that button.
and there's the sign up instructions and you'll get a we just hang around with us and see if you like us or not but today's date is July the 16th 2018 and we love stocks <laughs>